Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being here for Deborah Cobelt Live. Special guest on the phone with me today, Brian Bushman. He wrote the book, Becoming Okay, When You're Not Okay. Brian, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about Becoming Okay When You're Not Okay, and why'd you even, why did you write it? <laughs> well, I believe acceptance is like any human capacity. It can be developed almost like a muscle. But the problem is nobody ever tells you how to develop acceptance. In fact, in our society, acceptance is code for basically get over it, which I don't think is what the Buddha or Jesus or Confucius really meant by it. Now, Or anybody means by it. You know, I'm with right. you. When it's somebody right. says to me, right. Right. nothing worse when I'm feeling awful, whether I'm going through grief right. or whatever, and somebody goes, get over it. Uh, first of all, I want to just leave and never right. talk to them again. What does that mean? So go ahead, explain. Well, <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, look, I'm not opposed to fixing what can be fixed, but the right. purpose of the book and why I spent eight years writing it was to do three things. One, to identify and hopefully prevent patterns that create suffering. And two, to find overlap among voices of religion, uh, uh, voices of wisdom. Now, some people really like to focus on the differences in religious thoughts. I like to find what's in common among them. I agree with you because right there's a now, common, yeah. With how polarized everything is. Yeah, and three, to just give people a step to use regardless of what they feel about God uh, to develop uh, this thing we call acceptance. But you gotta, you got to kind of know what acceptance is. What is acceptance? How do you get to acceptance? That's a hard one. Well, it is a hard one. So first, it's important to know what acceptance is and what it isn't. Now, acceptance is not not liking your pain, or worse still, thinking that you somehow deserve it. Um, what acceptance is, in, in my opinion, is simply an acknowledgement of what you're experiencing without adding additional judgment. So here's what I mean. The truth is we don't, Deborah, just say to ourselves, right now I'm sad. What we do is we say to ourselves, right now I'm sad and I can't stand it. Did you hear that little judgment creep in there at the end? Uh, in fact, you can usually tell somebody's about to do something kind of dumb by how intensely they tell themselves, I can't stand it. Um, what are you supposed to tell them? Being, what, do you, what are they supposed to do? Like, well, I think, well, I think just being able to say, hey, right now I'm sad, and that's okay to be sad, rather than saying right now I'm sad, and therefore I have to do something right now with it. See, because we assume that being sad is true, we assume that I can't stand it must also be true. And while we're stuck in that judgment, we do something impulsive that makes life more complicated than like it needs to be. Like we get drunk, we get drunk, we yell at our spouse, we quit our jobs, all because we swallow that judgmental thought that comes with being sad. So, so when you, uh, let we, me give you a quick example. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's pretend a mother is arguing with her daughter, and daughter wants to go to a party, and mother rightfully says, no, you can't go to the party. Now, the girl is not going to say, wow, that was really good boundaries. Thank you for loving me enough to hurt me. She's going to, of course, have difficulty with it, and she might say something like, I hate you. Now, a mother, let's get inside the mother's head for a second. Acceptance would be mother saying to herself, hey, right now I'm getting upset. All right, that's fine. But what often happens for the mom is she says, I'm getting upset and my daughter is a good for nothing hobo that's going to live in my basement until she's 45. <laughs> now, did you see the little <laughs> judgment Absolutely, I the sure end? did. Just a, just a little bit. I mean, I kind of exaggerated a little bit for effect there. But those kind of statements of I can't stand it, this is horrible, I am horrible. While we're in that judgment, we end up doing something impulsive that we regret later. And I think this is one of the reasons why mindfulness has been so important for mental health, because mindfulness really is about acknowledging what we're feeling, but what we're experiencing, without necessarily getting pulled into that judgmental place where we do something impulsive. We were talking about the three paths to suffering. Could you tell me a little bit about what this is and also how blending east and west insights you believe in doing that as well right like so talk to me oh, a little absolutely. bit about yeah the, absolutely yeah it's almost like let's summarize a little some of the bullet points in your book that you think are really important sure, sure, for people sure. to know 
Well, you know, according and, – and I, I didn't come up with this. this. I have to attribute this to Buddhism. According to Buddhism, there's three poisons of the mind. Hmm. Now, I'm going to kind of westernize it a little bit, but hear what the three poisons of the mind or three paths of suffering are. First one is avoidance. Like I feel something that I, I just can't stand, and so I give it almost like a straight-arm treatment of an opposing tackler. Mm-hmm. I like push it away. I use denial. I tell myself I'm fine. But that provide that gives that feeling much more power, and it's exhausting to do. But that's the first path. The second path is if instead of pushing my pain away, imagine my hand is like that pushed away kind of straight arm treatment. The second path is what I call fusion, which is taking my hand and putting it right up in front of my face. I'm suddenly stuck in my pain. I can't see my way around it. If you've ever felt sorry for yourself, you know what fusion feels like. And there's this interesting dynamic in psychology that the harder we push away pain, eventually there's this rebound effect where that's the extent to which we get fused or pulled into our pain. And in either avoidance or fusion, we end up doing some things that are kind of impulsive. Right. And then the last, the, the last path is just when we really like something, and so we crave it or we cling to it. We hold tightly to it, almost like I'm holding tightly in my fist something I want. So it's like having one bowl of ice cream and then wanting so badly to re-experience that pleasure that we crave it and we have a second bowl of ice cream. You know what? I We're think... trying to... I think that's really common, at least for me, going through grief, yeah. because I, I went through a period of time yeah. where just so many people were leaving me. And by that, I mean, leaving the earth. And it was so hard yeah. for me to let go of anything and anyone who was still with me, um, young or old. Right. And it was just um, I was hanging right. on for dear life. And that didn't serve me or anybody else well at all. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when my father passed away a few years ago, I, I know what you're talking about. I craved his presence. I craved being around him. Now, that that's not greedy. That's not bad of me to have wanted to be around him. But it was really hard for me because I was so busy grasping that I wasn't living. Oh, absolutely. And, and I've I lived think- that. It's, it's hard. But then how do you how do you cross to the other side? I know with me, I walked outside and I just looked at the earth and time. Those were the two things that for and acceptance. I love that you build your book so much on acceptance. That's a hard place to get to, though. I mean, if anyone has a takeaway today, how can they get to acceptance? It's a hard place to get to. Okay, here's the great paradox of life. And this is going to sound so dumb. It's going to sound dumb. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Uh, If you can... If you can be okay with not being okay, eventually you'll be okay. Boy, if that isn't true. Because why? But if you're not okay, yeah. right, and if you're not okay with not being okay, then you may not be okay because you might do something impulsive to shoot yourself in the foot. And you know what? It all leads so back to part fear. Of what, yeah. Go it, ahead. It, it, so part of it is just being able to kind of say, look, right now I feel mad. Right now I feel sad. Right now I feel angry. Right now I feel this. This is my experience right now without adding that judgment. And yes, of course you want to fix what you can. You want to really be able to do some problem solving, but you'll never be able to do the problem solving if so much of your mind is is really set on struggling with what's what your experience is. Instead, we've got to acknowledge it and instead bring the the palm of my hand out just gently in front of our, my face by just gently being compassionate. And, and that is an easier thing uh, to say than to do because some of us did not get self-compassion modeled for us when we were growing up. No. And so we don't really know how to do it. It's a foreign language. It's Greek to us. We don't understand how to speak that language. And like any foreign language, there's all some fluency problems as we try to learn the language. And hopefully this book helps people learn how to develop that language. Well, the book touches a great deal on a lot, on depression, anxiety, chronic Mm -hmm. illnesses, emotional trauma, addiction. But it does lead back to accepting. And for those people who can't figure that out, I think you're right. You hit it. You just have to be okay with not being okay and know that in right. time and if you just let it evolve, however, it somehow will get yeah. a little better. It's got to, right? I mean, it just has to. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, the great thing is no feeling is final. Yeah. No feeling is final. I mean, things will come and go. We don't have to like them and we don't have to deserve them. But if we can just acknowledge them without getting trapped in that judgmental place where we're struggling with ourselves so much, eventually we're going to have the bandwidth that we need emotionally to cope with whatever it is, chronic pain, depression, anxiety, relationship problems. Instead of focusing my book on just one of those things, it all goes back to acceptance, because if you can't do acceptance, you ain't going to do change. But I love how you balance Eastern knowledge with Western knowledge, because there's a great deal of wisdom in both, not just one, but in both, in counseling, but also in in, in peace and in finding yourself as in you know yeah. Buddha principles, for example. I think this is a very, right. very smart book. I, I do. How did you get yourself to this place? Personally, I think I, I had worked originally at uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, oh. Tennessee, and seeing children with cancer mm. and seeing how they coped with it and how they were able to acknowledge having something as catastrophic as cancer really was part of the inspiration behind, is there a way that we can blend current scientific understanding of psychology with things that have been around for thousands of years? You know, I've got to be honest with you, Deborah. You know, what I've tried to do is I've tried to integrate a lot of things. There's not, you know, I can't take credit for a ton of the stuff in the book. It's more about how do we integrate this wisdom tradition that we all have, whether we're Christians or Buddhists or whether we have no religion at all, with some things that are going to be helpful and that will help us kind of move on in our lives. Yeah, and I always like to say sometimes it's right out your window. If you just look out the window and just try and find yeah. peace. I've really been in a very dark place myself, all surrounded. It all started from grief, and it just mushroomed. And I, yeah. I myself yeah. had to get to a place where I said, "You just just be, because this will have to pass. Yeah. Just, you know, and I, just yeah. like you, I got back to the trite phrases, this too shall pass, or whatever. Yeah. But they're true. There's a yeah. reason why they're out there. Accept it. Um, yeah. What do you now, say one, to somebody? One thing that's important is you mentioned time. Now, time is wonderful, and it can be very helpful if we join it with this self-compassion, this acceptance idea that I'm talking about. See, time by itself does not not heal all wounds. No. In fact, people have a way of re-injuring themselves when they struggle with what life has given them. So I think the idea here is pain is what life gives you. Suffering is how you respond to that pain, because there can be ways that you respond to that pain that prolong or complicate your life, which the Buddha would have called suffering. What do you do if you didn't, if you're not crazy about the way you handled some of your pain and you just, I was just talking okay. to a friend yesterday and she said, geez, I'm embarrassed. I've been so out of control. What do you, what do you tell that person who needs help just coming uh, back okay. to, to centering again? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, thank, welcome to the club. We have jackets, you know, yeah, right? <laughs> like all of us, all of us have had times where we got so stuck in our judgment. We did things that later uh, we were like, oh my gosh, you know, this is what was I thinking? So first of all, to be able to develop some self-compassion for yourself, you did it for a reason. What, what you don't want to do is just tell yourself you're crazy repetitively. Nobody has ever judged themselves into mental health. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, if, if, if that were true, I wouldn't have a job. Right. I would just tell people, you know, you should just tell yourself you're lousy and you really screwed up. Instead, part of what she needs to do is, yes, certainly acknowledge the mistake and be able to also acknowledge that she had a reason and she had a pain behind that. And if we can come at it from a place of self-compassion and we can talk to ourselves like we would a good friend instead of telling ourselves that I'm lousy and I'm horrible, then we can acknowledge it and we can move on rather than just being able to tell ourselves repetitively, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, or telling ourselves repetitively, I'm lousy, I'm lousy, I'm a horrible human being. You Neither one of those extremes really help. You have a website, right? Do you do you put out blogs yes. and videos and what? What's your website? Okay, my website is www.brianbushman.com. Uh, and, and it's D R B R Y A N B U S H M A N. So Brian spelled with a Y and doctor's just D R. 
uh, dot com, and uh, they can go on the home page there to find the book if that's what they're interested in. And if they're anything like me, they can uh, just read the first two chapters for free and see if it's a right fit for them. Um, I also have my blog on there where I'm posting things uh, pretty frequently for different things that come up. Most, everything that's on there is free. Um, I'm more interested in just getting the information out there than I am anything else. You can find the book if you're interested on Amazon.com. It's just becoming okay and in parentheses when you're not okay. And you can find it on Amazon or you can go on the website and you can kind of download the first you know, chapter or so and, and just check it out and see if it's something that appeals to you. But regardless of whether you go with my book or, or something else, I think the major thing I hope people are taking away is that we all have our pain and judging it away isn't going to help. Ignoring it's not going to help. Being able to have some self-compassion and be able to treat it gently with the compassion and the understanding it deserves will give us the bandwidth we can, and we can maybe move on with our lives so it doesn't have to be a, a kind of a judgmental repression. Thank you so much, Brian Bushman, Becoming Okay, When You're Not Okay. I found this to be a very, very valuable book, which is why I reached out to you, actually. Um, and I have other friends Thank who've you. read it since. It's, um, it's an easy read. And sometimes, you know, you're reading it and you go, ah, okay. And if you just open yourself up to trying some simple sort of, um, you know, personal skills that you can use that have been done for years and centuries, I just think um, it's a very, very yeah. valuable lesson. So thank you so much for writing this and for being here. Can people also call you if they want private counsel, including Skype or anything like that? What, I, what I'm at is you can uh, definitely, the best way to get a hold of me is to go ahead and go through the website. Okay. And then I'm working in Utah right now. I'm at the KD Hospital. But the best way to go is through the, the drbrianbushman.com. And uh, that's the best way to kind of get in touch with me. And you'll reach out. Okay, again, thank you so much for being yeah. here and for all you do to help all of us out there. Uh, Becoming Okay When You're Not Okay, available on Amazon. Brian Bushman, thanks so much for joining us. And um, you can hear more about Brian uh, by listening uh, to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and you can watch us, obviously, here on Facebook, YouTube, IGTV, and everywhere else. Thanks so much for joining us today on Deborah Cobalt Live. We'll see you next time.